This robot makes a path all the way across the robot game board. It uses the color sensor to know when to turn and the yaw sensor to make precise turns. Welcome to another session of First Lego League Unearthed. I'm Preston with Spratronics Learning Lab in Greenville, South Carolina. This week, we're gonna use our driving base robot from last week to complete the guided mission. We're gonna go step by step through the shared code to understand what everything does. And then finally, we're gonna talk about teamwork and discuss the different roles that you can play to help your team to be successful this year. To get to our build and our code, we're gonna be using the web app of Lego Spike Prime. On your computer or tablet, go to spike.legoeducation.com. We'll click on Spike Prime, Unit Plans, scroll over to Competition Ready, and this mission changes every year. We're doing number four, the Guided Mission, 2025-26. You can click on Start, and then it's nice to watch this video to see what we're gonna be building today. This is the Guided Mission video. You're going to want to watch this closely with your team and maybe watch it a couple of times. Pay close attention to where the robot starts from and what actions it takes to complete the guided mission. In today's lesson, you're going to be building this robot and following the exact code that LEGO used to solve this mission. We need to build this robot, and if you've been following along with us, we already have the robot built. You'll build driving base and then add the color sensor to it. And it doesn't show it, but we need to build the arm from last week. We're gonna be using the Forge mission today. Once your robot is built, you're ready to click the next button and go on to where we're going to give you the code. Go ahead and connect your hub and then send this code to your robot. You can do it by changing the number down here and clicking download or just clicking play and it'll send this code to your robot. Make sure your robot's not in a spot where it might drive off a table. I like to keep mine on the robot game mat. We're going to be reading through this code as well as doing some troubleshooting. I pay close attention to where this robot begins from so that my robot can do something similar. This is gonna be a lot of troubleshooting. You may be running into issues like we were, and there are different fixes. We're connected to our hub, and I will tell you that this build that I have connected right now is not this robot. I have a different build that I'm working on right now, so these may not match up with what you see on your screen, but we will be taking a closer look at some of these sensors and degrees later on. Our first step, set movement motors to C and D. As always, when we're building a robot that drives with two motors, we use the pink movement block and we have to tell the hub which motors to use. Next, I see that we are setting yaw angle to zero. We have a whole video all about using yaw angle and if you've not watched that, I recommend you do it. It will really take your first LEGO league to the next level. Yaw angle is the direction your hub is pointing. Let's click on your hub and we can look at the yaw angle. Right here, we have yaw. And if you rotate your hub around, that yaw angle is going to change. When we set yaw to zero, it just means whichever direction your hub is po pointing now becomes zero degrees or north or however you'd like to think about it. We then tell the robot to start moving straight. It's going to continue moving straight until the reflection is less than 25%. What this is looking for, it's typically looking for a black line. You may run into the same problem that we ran into where our robot was seeing the black lines in the starting zone. And so rather than going to the middle of the mat, it would turn left early on. The fix for that, we can go to control and we can say, wait, maybe two seconds. That's enough time to get your robot out of the home base, and then it will start looking for the black line. Another option could be to change that reflection percentage until it sees a solid, thick black line. So that's one way to troubleshoot. I see we have this stop moving. So once it sees a black line, it's going to stop moving. We're gonna change the speed and then start moving left. And this is a pretty severe left turn, and it's going to continue turning left until that yaw angle, that's what our which direction our hub is pointing, becomes less than negative 89. Then it'll stop moving again, and then begin moving straight. In this straight, 
we have 3.1 rotations. That means the wheels are going to turn 3.1 times. Then it's going to start moving right. And that's another severe right turn or an extreme right turn. And it's gonna keep going until that yaw angle is negative one. And it's going slowly, so it should notice when the yaw angle is negative one. If you see that your hub is overturning, you can sometimes put a greater than um, symbol right there to fix that. And then it says to stop moving. In order to see all these stops and these turns, I like to add a wait one second. And this is just when I'm troubleshooting, not for competition, but anytime I see stop moving, I like to add wait one second. That just gives me a chance to see that our robot has moved to the correct location and what it's about to do. Now I'm going to add one right here where it says move straight for 3.1 rotations. It should stop there as well, but it knows to stop because it's going there. I put these pauses in just so I can see what my robot is doing. Get another stop moving. Wait one second. Move right 100 for 0.45 rotations. So this is where they took a measurement to make that happen. I like to wait and then move forward. So throw some weights in here if you need help figuring out what each part of the code does. And each of those weights, you could identify what has your robot done? What step of the guided mission has it completed so far? Another thing you could do, you could add a light onto your robot every time you saw that stop or every time we put that weight. So you could say this is section one of our code. So I'm just gonna draw a one. Then you could go down and where do we have a stop moving right here, stop moving. I didn't put a weight there. Wait. And then we would make a new light and say this is section two. Another option, you could just use the light and write it there. So we'll do that for the next one. Wait one second. I'm going to write three. Wait one second. That's going to be part four of our code. But this is a great way to make a visual, visual indicator of what's going on in your code. This will help you identify where's a problem. If a problem is happening while your robot says one, you know you need to fix it up here in session section one, which is where it's first looking for that black line before it makes its left turn. If it says two, you know that that's the left turn that's messing up. But I like to put in these indicators so I know what my robot is doing at each step of the code. We ran into plenty of issues while trying this guided mission. Stick with it, make sure your starting point matches what the intended starting point is, and you're always starting from the same location if you're making changes to the code. And you may have to add something onto your arm in order to connect with the forge, but you will get it. We've spent a lot of time today going over code for that guided mission. And a lot of things are going on in that guided mission. There's multiple ways to turn, multiple sensors that are being utilized, and that can become overwhelming at that point. We're at a good point in our season now where we're gonna do another couple sessions about how to move your robot around and control your robot. And then it's a lot of problem solving and engineering solutions for the different missions, as well as working on your innovation project. This is a great chance for your team to read over the team roles in your engineering notebook and start assigning some jobs. Figure out who might be a really good leader for the team, somebody that can keep everybody on track and have one-on-one -on -one meetings with the coach. Who could be somebody that could be doing research on your innovation project? But read over these team roles and start deciding who's gonna do what job. Because as we move forward in First Lego League, unearthed, we're going to be dividing up the tasks a little bit more. We have an innovation project to work on. We have a robot design that somebody's gonna to need to be able to speak about. We also have coding and engineering solutions to the challenges for the robot game. And each of these parts of First Lego League are equally important. So just being really good at the robot game doesn't mean your team is gonna be competitive if you don't have a strong innovation project 
or can't explain your robot to the judges. So read over these jobs, come up with some great ideas. And this is a long lesson today, and there's lots more that you can be doing with this. Please let me know if you need any help. Thanks for watching and have a wonderful day.